So let's talk about writing lyrics for sync. A few of you guys are really interested in creating full vocals for your tracks and basically full songs. Um, more and more as this industry evolves, uh, full songs are becoming actually probably more in demand than they've ever have. So if you are able and you're gifted enough to be able to be a singer yourself or you've got you know a, a friend or a partner or somebody that you can collaborate with and have them sing on top of your tracks, you're gonna be in a really, really strong position. But when we create um, lyrics and full songs for the sync industry, just like I've taught you guys with our instruments, we do need to gear and strive for making sure that our tracks are useful and licensable for the libraries. Not just to write a song, just to write a song, but to make sure that if we're gonna put effort into this music, it actually can land in a TV show. That's really the ultimate goal, of course. So what I'm gonna do here is just outline for you the four major elements of writing licensable lyrics, and then we'll dive into each individual one of these topics so that you have a better understanding of how to make sure that you are delivering the highest quality product you possibly can with your songs. First is going to be you want to use general language. And now this is where it's pretty much a 180 degree flip from writing pop music. With pop music, you kind of want to show and not tell. So you actually want to get into specifics with pop music to sort of uh, describe a scene, describe an emotion. The more specific you can get into something, the more people feel that they can relate to it. It's not 100% across the board, but generally what you'll hear in a lot of pop music is specific storytelling about specific things that happen to specific people, okay? In sync licensing, we really don't want to go down those very specific rabbit holes because we want to make sure that our one track about, let's say, heartbreak isn't so specific to one particular male point of view or female point of view or based on a particular type of breakup or a particular length of time or was it a marriage, was it a girlfriend, was it a boyfriend? We kind of want to actually open up our story of whatever emotion, whatever story we're telling to be very broad and very general so that many different ads or commercials or TV shows could use our music, right? So the, part of this is basically we're creating a system. We don't want to go for one particular minute little type of placement. We really want to open ourselves up to get as many different types of placements within like the heartbreak area as we possibly can. So we'll get into that in this um, presentation a little bit more in detail. You want to use popular themes. So I actually have a list of the most popular themes um, that you're going to see and hear on TV so that basically you don't have to waste time writing a bunch of music and a bunch of lyrics about topics that probably won't get a lot of placements just by their very nature. You might be writing great lyrics, great melodies, everything's working great, but you send it into a library and they're like, well, we don't really have a lot of use for songs about X, Y, or Z. So I wanna make sure that if you're gonna start writing lyrics or start collaborating with somebody, right off the bat, you give them this list and say, whatever we write, it needs to be, it needs to fit into this list of categories of themes or emotions that we wanna go into uh, to make sure that we're gonna get the most amount of placements we possibly can. You really gotta make sure that you sell the emotion, the story, whatever it is you're conveying with your vocal production. So there's some key things I'm gonna point out to make sure that you're not making these sort of basic mistakes that a lot of um, producers and vocalists can make. So whether you're producing the vocals, meaning you're recording them and you're gonna sort of mix them and, and do that kind of stuff, you probably are. So you need to know that there is gonna be a certain time and place to be putting effects on the vocals. And there are certainly times that you don't want to be putting effects on the vocals. So we're gonna talk about how to make make sure that you get the best performance out of that. And then last but not least, we're gonna talk about keeping it clean, which actually has multiple meanings, not necessarily just about bad words and that kind of thing, but there's multiple meanings to that, so we'll dive into that as well. So let's first talk about the general language you need to use. So as I said before, you wanna avoid describing specific situations and people. So you don't wanna talk about this particular person wearing a particular article of clothing, walking down a particular street name, right? That's the kind of thing where if you, if you say the man wearing the suit walking down Main Street, well, how many commercials are gonna have a man wearing a suit walking down a literal Main Street? A few but not nearly as maybe if you kept it more general and talked about a man either on a purpose, right? Trying to find his way in the world or a man lost who just lost everything and he's hopeless, right? So you can kind of zoom out a little bit on the specifics of what you're talking about and really more tell the general story of what's happening with this person and why are you telling the story, right? So that multiple clients can actually relate to whatever it is you're trying to tell. And we'll talk about some examples here on this slide actually. 
And you definitely want to create like a universal appeal, as I just mentioned. So you want to, whatever your emotion, your core meaning of your story, you want to basically zoom out from the specifics and try to create that universal appeal. What can most people really relate to this through? How, what language could I use that most people could say? It's almost like they could plug in their own specifics. Um, you know, one of the best examples of this is two recent like sort of political ones. Um, one was... Um, uh, I forgot Obama's one. It was like hope and change or something like that. And it was a very big, broad sort of uh, branding, right? And the reason why it works so well is because everybody's version of what hope and change means is completely different, right? So you can plug in your own details. Oh, yeah, I think this should change and that should change. And the next person next to you is all, just as excited about hope and change, but they're thinking it differently. Same thing with make America great again, right? It was like, well, what does great again mean? Well, who are you talking to? But it's such a big banner that everybody can kind of basically plug into it. So we're using the same type of concept here where we're basically trying to create a universal banner that people and clients really is who you're really going for can plug in their specific um, stories and details that they need to. Let's just go over some bad examples. And these are only bad in terms of licensability. These might not be bad in terms of a pop song or if you're writing music for your fans. That's completely separate. But when it comes to sync licensing, these are the type of lyrics that actually probably wouldn't get placed and probably wouldn't really work out so well, okay? So I, let me actually show you the good examples and we're gonna go through from the bad to the good and I'll kind of explain to you why one works better than the other. So here's those same examples improved for sync licensing, okay? So the first one, I want the girl in the red dress. So you can picture there's some girl dancing or she's across the bar and in the, in the restaurant, something like that, and you see this girl, but you had a specific detail there She's in a red dress. Well, if there's any, you know, any commercial that has like, I don't know, some girl who's putting on lipstick, but she do, she doesn't have to be wearing, she's not wearing a red dress in the commercial, they can't place it. Because like, well, I want the girl in the red dress, but she's wearing yellow in the commercial. So that doesn't really work. So if we just rewrite that and we just put, I want that girl, and we sort of emphasize that even in how we sing it and how we produce it. Well, that girl, what we're really talking about when, I, when we say, I want the girl in the red dress is, I want that girl that's an object of desire. Like she's very attractive and she's getting all the eyes in the room. It's kind of what we're really saying with that. We don't need the specifics to say that. But if we just have a nice catchy hook that says, I want that girl. How many different types of makeup commercials can use that or um, I mean, uh, promos for TV shows, uh, you know, that kind of thing. It can go all over the place. So again, we want to zoom out and we want to think about what is it we're really trying to communicate. Um, and also something that can really stick. So I want that girl can absolutely stick. You can hear that, right? Uh, she uses everyone to get ahead. So this is somebody who is maybe manipulative or somebody who is doing nefarious things, right? But it's a very specific kind of accusation. She's using everyone to get ahead. What's, what's more powerful than that is just to say she's a bad girl, right? And have a really catchy melody that just says she's a bad girl for your hook. That's the kind of thing that will be like, well, it can be a bad girl in terms of she's got a bad attitude, she commits crimes, right? How many different TV shows could use something like that? Um, it also could be a, sort of a compliment. She's a bad girl, meaning she's got a lot of style. She's got a lot of attitude in, in a good way. So you're, you're now actually opening up your system to be able to create a lot more placements if you just zoom out, okay? Give me a big house and a sports car, right? So wanting the better life, essentially. So instead of talking about the specific things you want, which might not apply to an ad that you're going for, give me the good life. Can I get a taste of the good life, right? How many different credit card commercials could go for that. There's so many different types of places you could find with that kind of a thing. I can't get out of the rat race. So feeling a little burned out, feeling like you're not getting ahead in life. So I can't get ahead. That's a little bit more universal. Everybody can say, they might not feel like they're stuck in a rat race, but they might just feel I'm stuck at my job. I'm stuck in this relationship. I'm stuck in something. So I can't get ahead. Well, that's the universal appeal that most people can plug into. A lot of people will feel like they're stuck in the rat race for sure, but not everybody and not every client, okay? And then I'm excited for the future, something like that. Well, you could just say, I'm ready. Now, I'm ready is you could do something like that could be basically for sports, for, um, you know, for uh, uh, boxing <laughs> elements coming up. Uh, that could be for commercials. That could be for promos. That could be for, um, yeah, almost everything. So when you basically zoom out of a specific what you're really going for and go for something more generic and more general, then you're gonna see. So it doesn't mean though that you write crappy melodies or you just don't really try to sell what it is you're selling here because these are definitely much more simple, much more kind of, you know, what you wanna say they're, they're dumbed down, you could say in a way. But in another way, I feel that they are much more, it's like less is more. You, you're giving us less of the specifics but more of the emotion and more of the appeal that you need to sell with your vocals, right? And how you produce your lyrics. So hopefully these few examples can kind of give you an idea of where you wanna go. And of course, these are kind of more something you would probably put in the hook 
hook. Um, but in the chorus, you know, sort of a part where people can sing along, but you would still use all these uh, concepts for a verse if you're going to have a verse. One pro tip I can give you guys is I'm seeing a lot of albums starting to come out with libraries where there's nothing actually in the verses. There's no lyrics at all. There's no vocals. It's only on the hooks and they have something this simple. I want that girl. She's a bad girl. Give me a good life. I can't get ahead. I'm ready. They have something this simple, but it's really catchy. It's really well produced. There's harmonies on top of it. There might be backing vocals. It's basically just a super catchy hook with a very universal tag on top of it. And that's actually becoming more and more popular in this industry. So there also might be some opportunities for you to find those kind of companies as well. If you were in Sync Edge, obviously I just, I recommended one of them a few months ago and there's definitely one in there you can, you can check out. But it's definitely a, a way to go in terms of having something that's gonna be really high quality and high value for this business, okay? So now this is a real treat that I, I want to give you guys is just getting the most popular themes that you could possibly find in TV film placements. So I've been in this business for 13 years. I've seen a lot of films. I've seen a lot of TV. I've watched. I've seen what kind of tracks of mine get placed and all that kind of stuff. And basically with all the, the custom opportunities I've received over the years, these um, are, the f are the few um, themes and basically emotions, moods, stories, whatever you want to call them that are basically gonna show up over and over and over again on TV. Um, you'll find some exceptions to the rule, but basically if you just stick with these ones, you will find homes for your tracks. You will definitely find a place for those uh, lyrics that you're gonna write, okay? So let's go get uh, go ahead and get, in, get into these. Oops, here we go. So love, hope, excitement, ready for battle and striving through adversity. So with love, that could be falling in love, that could be losing love, that could be longing for love, that could be anything about love. Love is the same thing with pop music. It's the most popular topic basically ever <laughs> that's ever uh, existed in, in, uh, in the history of mankind. So writing about love in one way or another will definitely find you um, opportunities, okay? Hope, hope for the future, hope for getting through today, a better tomorrow, that kind of a thing, okay? Um, excitement, so this could be much more about being excited to purchase something, getting excited to uh, take a road trip, getting excited to live on the edge, right? So excitement is definitely going to find its way into a lot of advertising campaigns, commercials, services, products, that kind of thing. Ready for battle, this is all over the place in sports. So anything talking about you're getting hyped up, you're getting ready for game day, you're putting your game face on, you're ready for battle, you're you're ready for war, you're ready, whatever, you know, anything about we're about to hype things up, then you're going to see a lot of placements in the sort of sports um, and um, yeah, m mostly the sports um, uh, place on, on TV. And then striving through adversity. So this is something where you're feeling the weight of the world, the weight of living life, the weight of something that's really weighing you down, but striving and trying to get through that and trying to overcome it that is getting placed all over the place in multiple different uh, genres and different approaches but these themes are the ones that you probably want to just stick to to ensure that you're not wandering off into some other world where you're talking about aliens abducting you and you're flying into other outer space you know things that you might be interested in personally but you'll find nobody on tv really is looking for those kind of themes so just stick to these and you'll be in really good shape okay now let's talk about selling it with your vocal production. You really got to sell what you're putting together. So the tone of the voice that you use, whether it's you or somebody else, it really must match the mood or the emotion of the lyrics. So if you're singing about I'm ready for battle and your voice is really quiet and soft, but you're trying to like, you know, compensate by throwing a bunch of EQ and, and filters and distortion on it, never work. It never will work. You really got to have whoever's singing sell whatever that emotion is. So if it's excited to be in love your voice better sound really excited so in the tone of your voice and how you're singing or how your vocalist is singing you really need to focus a lot on that it might be going through and trying different takes to that approach multiple times and then picking out okay which one of these approaches really feels more like we're excited okay because you, you definitely need to sort of a b test many different approaches for this to till you find the one that actually works so usually i say with working with vocalists don't ever go with the first one right it might be the first one that you go with but always tell them before you get started or for yourself say let's go through in a little experiment we're going to do five different approaches to this i want you to sing completely differently these five different times as we go through the course and then we're going to kind of go back and see which one really feels like it matches what we're trying to sell and then go with that. So it's one crucial little step, but it can definitely save you in terms of getting tracks accepted and placed in the long run. And if you're going to use effects, you know, distortion or compression or anything for your effects, 
for your vocals, do it to enhance what's already there because you've already gone through that experimental phase, you've already picked out the right tone, but don't do it to replace vocal performance. So again, if you're trying to get um, this really rough, intense vocal performance and you're not getting it from that singer, so you decide, all right, I'll just crank up a bunch of distortion, it'll never sound right. It'll sound like somebody was quietly singing in a vocal booth and you have this massive maybe track behind it and it's just not working and it's not selling that. So get the right vocalist, right? Sometimes that means having a tough conversation with a vocalist that you thought was the right one to say, you might not be the right one for this particular album. Let's have you work on something else. Or for yourself, you know, having that tough love for me, story of my life is knowing that I'm not a great singer and wanting to sing on most of my music but going after I went through, you know, hours and hours of producing my own vocals going, this is not going to cut it. <laughs> this is just not good enough. I need to go hire somebody and find somebody to sing or collaborate with somebody, right? So just being honest with yourself about what you really need to do and not trying to use effects to mask up for something that's not really ready to go. And it must feel, the track really kind of must feel like a missing hit. What I mean by that is that like, it's almost got to be so good that it's like a hit song that never hit the charts. And it's, it's just got that sort of catchiness, that real direct connection to the listener. And it feels like a hit like it could have been an absolutely a hit if it had just been released publicly so always have your mindset and your expectation that that's the level of quality you need to get to do not think of this as like ah whatever tv film music who cares good enough if you're thinking that way you will be cutting corners and doing less of what you possibly can you're not going to be hitting your full potential so every track should be man we got to produce this as if this were a hit song and this is so good that if it were released publicly it would actually take off and be a hit Keep that mindset and then you're going to really reach for the stars in terms of how um, good your music is going to sound. So last but not least, let's talk about this keep it clean and the dual means for that. Obviously, the obvious one is, you know, no cussing, no swearing, no um, you know derogatory language, no uh, racial epithets. Yeah, it's basically just keep it. Mostly, this applies with hip hop music. Um, I get this question from a lot of hip hop producers, like, what about what can I say? What can I say? It's basically just keep it clean. Doesn't mean you don't have to have attitude. Doesn't mean you don't have to come aggressive. With you, you definitely can come aggressive with your your lyrics and how you're you're singing and what you're talking about, like pumping yourself up in um, in a way, basically kind of like threatening you know, that you're about to basically take on the world. Definitely go for that, you want that energy. But if you start cussing, again, you start limiting where your tracks can get placed because there's only gonna be so many, so many places and certain times of the day where they're gonna allow that kind of language. So if you wanna pigeonhole yourself, be your own guest. But I would recommend just try to find other creative ways to express that intensity, that emotion, that anger, that whatever it is, without um, any words that could be believed basically off of TV. In other words, um, you know, try to keep it clean. Secondly, though, the other meaning to this is to keep your lyrics clearly enunciated. I love this word because it's actually hard to say clearly, enunciated. So when you're recording your vocalist or yourself, you really need to open your mouth up. You need to make sure your lips are really expressing the lyrics and the words precisely. Um, sometimes it means you need to over exaggerate how you're pronouncing your, pronouncing your words because when you sing, sometimes we swallow certain vowels and certain consonants. So we really need to be very, very careful that if we're going through all this effort to produce lyrics and then you can't even hear what we're saying, which I've actually had many times as I reviewed a lot of music, you just shot yourself in the foot and wasted a whole bunch of time. Okay, so here's a little test and I'll leave you guys with this one to make sure that you're doing things right. When you're done with your track, play it for a friend and say, please repeat the lyrics back to me. So play the verse if there's lyrics there and say, all right, what did you hear? and see if they can actually hear what you produce. That's your test. If an average person who doesn't have particular, you know, maybe particular music production training or really anything, if they can just understand what your lyrics are, especially in the chorus, really, really important, but definitely the lyrics in the verse as well. If they can repeat it back to you, thumbs up, you're doing your job. That's how you'll know whether or not you've passed this test or not. The average Joe needs to be able to hear your vocals correctly. And just the last little tip I'll say is that generally you're gonna want your vocals to obviously be hot in the mix. They need to be the most prominent thing, especially when you're putting them on the hook, something that's going to be grabbing the attention of the listener. So just always make sure that you're not treating your vocals like, oh, it's another instrument, it's another guitar, it's another this and that. I'll just kind of keep it with everything else. No, with pop music and anything with lyrics, lyrics are really, really front and center. So don't be afraid to really boost those up a little bit. Err on the side of having your lyrics a little too loud rather than having them buried in the mix. I really do think that that's kind of the way to go. So that's what I got for you guys. I hope you guys find this useful and informational. And of course, these are rough guidelines. This is a general approach to this. There are exceptions to all these rules. There are ways to get through all this kind of stuff, making your own way. But this is basically what I've seen in the last 13 years, the probably the strongest, most solid way to ensure you stay away from the mistakes and the things that 
that are going to basically waste your time and not get you um, not get your your tracks placed and accepted by a library. So I hope you guys use this and make some amazing, great vocal music.